Tom Bilyeu is the host of Impact Theory, an interview series that explores the mindsets of the world's highest achievers. He went from growing up in a morbidly obese family, being dead broke and not able to pay his bills, to building his company Quest Nutrition, which is a billion dollar business. Need motivation? Watch a top 10 with Believe Nation. Top 10, I got a top 10. Got my motivation high for my top 10. Gotta learn from the wise women and men all my life. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and chances are you are the most ambitious person in your circle, but you know you're capable of more. And you get that push by surrounding yourself with the best. So today, let's learn from one of the best, Tom Bilyeu, and my take on his top 10 rules for success. Enjoy. Okay, let's kick it off with rule number one, believe. We're surrounded. They're in front of us, behind us, to the left and right of us. They can't get away this time. When you can be surrounded, when you can be in a position where you know that you're outgunned and still convince yourself that you're going to win, to go into it believing you're going to win, then you'll understand one of the fundamental truths of being a human being. To accomplish the extraordinary, first, first, you must believe. You have to believe in something even before you have any earthly right to believe in it. You have to be able to look inside of yourself and know that you're going to show up. To look inside of yourself and see something that nobody else can see. To know that you are playing to win. To know that you understand the way the mind works and that if you can't believe it first, if you can't see a vision for yourself of being capable of something, then you're not capable of it. And that if you want to do what other people simply can't do, then you've got to start by convincing yourself that you can do it. That comes down to a belief about who you are and what you're capable of. And that belief is yours to hold. No one can give it to you. No one can take it away. That is who you are, a decision a choice, a belief. Rule number two, chase your bliss. Walk us through your goal setting process. Okay, so um, normally it starts with um, chasing my bliss. So if you have read Joseph Campbell, he talks a lot about this, and this is really powerful, and I think that's something um, people don't think a lot about. There is something in your life, and this is sort of my secret, um, not secret because I've talked a lot about it, but it's like the thing, I don't think people are hearing me. It's like in you right now, I promise, is something that you love to do. And most people dismiss it. And they dismiss it probably because they don't know how to monetize it. They don't think it could be a job. They don't think it can be a business. Their family and friends have told them you know, that that's silly or stupid or whatever. And so they never realize, like they're, they literally have a blinder to the fact that there is something in their life that's a raging interest. It may not be quite a passion, but it's like a raging interest. Mm -hmm. And so I'm always trying to start there. So the example that I always give to people of a raging interest is video games. So a lot of people like to play video games or they like to read or whatever, right? So it's like the thing that they go and do when they're sort of you know, um, contracting into themselves, they've had a rough day or whatever, or even Jesus, food. Like people really retreat into mm -hmm. food, right? And so, um, Imagine becoming a food blogger, right? It's like food is that thing that gives you comfort. It's that thing that you think you have this negative relationship with. You've got this really um, unstable thing where you eat and you feel guilty, whatever. Like if you could recognize that, okay, this is something that I love. There is a way to find a healthy relationship with this. I'm going to do that. And then I want to talk about it and I'm going to you know, connect with other people. And even if in the beginning you don't know how to make money at it, like do it because it will make you feel alive, right? right? And there's that great quote, and again, wow, I'm really forgetting my quotes today, of who said it, but it was like, don't worry about what you could be great at. Do the thing that makes you feel most alive because what the world really needs is people who've come alive. And so like, yes. if you tap into that thing that makes you feel alive, like that to me is the juice. So turn inward, don't dismiss it, no matter how silly or stupid it might be. Like, what is that thing that makes you feel most alive? So that's always where I'm 
starting. So when you think about um, what we were doing at Quest or now what we're doing with Impact Theory, those were both moments where I turned inside and said, okay, what are like what's me following my bliss? Rule number three, identify the gap. This is the thing when I really sit down and try to break down for people what you need to do to be successful. There are certain places I stop because there's nothing universal to give them. Um, and the plan is one of them, right? So I'm, I'm just ridiculously psycho about people need a goal, a hyper-specific goal, and a plan. So my thing is identify the gap between where you are and where you wanna be, and that gap is a gap of skill set. And now you have to go and get those skills. But most people can't identify what skills actually lie between where they are and where they wanna go. They, they get it like from the end result, but they don't know how to plan that out. Yeah. And I'm not, like, I don't even understand other than just sort of by intuition how I'm doing it. Rule number four, adopt the it's all my fault belief system. I wanna tell you a story, and the story is either gonna make you love me or hate me. It has that effect on people. The story goes like this, my wife is British. Some of this story is true and some is made up. I'll try to delineate. My wife is British, that really is true. Let's say that she was in London visiting her family. She's in the bedroom that she grew up in. The doors are locked. The alarm is on. Her mother is sitting quietly in the next room, protecting her from all kinds of woes. And right at that moment, a meteorite comes screaming through the atmosphere, smashes through the roof, and kills my wife. Whose fault is that? Now, I know what most people are thinking. It's nobody's fault. It's divine providence. It's luck. It's fate. It just is what it is. That's not how I live my life. And I invite you all to adopt the following belief system. It's all my fault. Now, I use the word fault because it jabs people in the ribs. It gets people's attention. It makes them angry because they think I'm victim shaming or blaming the victim, and I'm not. I'm saying I refuse to ever be a victim. And if I maintain control, then there's something that I could do about it. Now, I use that example because it seems so absurd. And yet, at the same time, I know this is true. There is a group that track what are called near-Earth objects. And they're trying to make sure that if one is ever on a collision course for Earth, that we'd be able to do something about it, whether it's a laser or a planted nuclear explosion, whatever the case may be. Now, I know they exist. I even know where they are. I've never called them to give them encouraging words. I've never sent them a dime of my money. I've never sent them ideas. I know they exist, I do nothing about it. So why on earth, if it comes around and that decision bites me in the ass and my wife is killed by a meteorite, would I blame anyone else? I could have done something and I chose not to. Now here's the great news, I think it's a wise choice. I think the odds of that happening to my wife are so slim that it would be a total waste of time. But it shows you the lengths to which I had to take my mentality in order to learn the skills that I needed to learn to get where I wanted to go. And the way that I define an entrepreneur is somebody who encounters an obstacle and gets really pissed because the thought of giving up never occurs to them. And now they know they have to go over, under, through it, around it, whatever, but they're not gonna slow down and they're not gonna stop. All right, what is up everybody? I wanna talk to you about my good friend, Evan Carmichael's book right here, Built to Serve. I'm actually gonna read you a section. There are some amazing parts of this book, and this is one of my favorite. It's under the title, Comfort is the Enemy of Greatness. And it goes, when you're comfortable, you don't get strong. When you have plenty of fresh air and no adversity, you crumble as soon as something gets hard. It's rarely the kids of rich parents who go on to do great things, even though they have all the advantages that money, connections, and education can buy. Why is that? Because they're too comfortable. People who are comfortable don't create great things. There it is, Evan Carmichael, bringing the heat in his book, Built to Serve, get a copy. Rule number five, find your lead domino. How do you handle competing simultaneous good ideas? <laughs> Things have to be done sequentially. And that, yeah, that's a, a, a huge pain, but really focusing on one thing at a time is super critical to getting things over the finish line. And this is something that not enough people think about. Getting something over the finish line is, is the key. So um, it gets really boring and there's just an innate um, boredom to, especially when I um, conceptualize it as being an entrepreneur. One of the things that every now and then just sort of tongue in cheek and for fun I'll document is when we're doing something really boring or stupid. Um, like this morning I should have filmed it. Lisa spent like an hour wrangling cables. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that shit is so dull, but it <laughs> has to be done. Like otherwise, 
you you get right up to it. Like you've got all these grand ideas. You're going to change the world. You're going to do this amazing stuff. And then cables are the thing that stop you, right? And so that's one of the things that makes Amazon so amazing is they get it like on a tactical level, just from a how do you improve the customer experience? Blocking and tackling, blocking and tackling, right? It's not sexy, but you've got to do it, the blocking mm-hmm. and tackling. So it's the same thing with doing things sequentially. You'll get these great ideas. You want to do them all and you can do them all. There's so much time in life, but you just can't do them all at the same time. So breaking them into... And if they stack, and that, like this concept that Tim Ferriss has of the lead domino, like finding that, what is the, so if you've got these five things that you want to do, the order that you do them in can be really critical. And then I know that in saying that I'm paralyzing people, because then they're like, well, I don't know what the order is. And yes, that's one of the things you have to get good at is really identifying what is the sequence in which things are optimally done. And the only way to do that is to stop and think through it and think, okay, what's the lead domino? If I do this, then what are the other things that fall? So take, um, for me, speed reading or the way I do it, Audible, that was like the lead domino. If I can train myself to assimilate information faster, then I can get a skill faster. And if I can get a skill faster, then I can execute faster. So I actually put a lot of early energy into learning to um, listen to Audible books at 3X, right? So people always think that like I'm crazy. And part of me is always hoping like someone will say, show me your Audible right now. I want to see that it's actually at 3X. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> because it's like I put so much energy and effort into like into being like able to do that and people like think that. that oh well you just have some lucky skill it's not that it, like anything you just push yourself to do it and I'm absolutely horrific at speed reading so if I hadn't um, gotten into Audible I would have really really had to force myself to do that because it's a lead domino so find those things that um, that are the lead dominoes and just ask like what's gonna if I do this thing what's the one that gives me the exponential result on the other stuff Rule number six, outwork others. This has been one of my favorite weeks, and it's been one of my favorite weeks for a reason that's probably very counterintuitive for everybody. It's because I've been tested. Last week, I was sick. I don't know if it was the flu, food poisoning, whatever it was, but I had my ass handed to me. I was sleeping like 12, 13 hours a night, which for me is absolutely unheard of. And then this week, I had three episodes to prepare for. We shot them in less than 48 hours. So uh, over the course of just a couple of days, I had to jam pack my brain full of three three incredible human beings, Mel Robbins, Jason Silva, and Wyclef Jean. It was insane and entailed doing an absolute ton of work, but this is what I love. This is where I get to earn my reputation with myself. I talk about earning credibility with yourself all the time, and the only chance you get to do that is when things get hard. I'm never impressed with myself how I act when things are easy, and I'm very impressed with myself when things are hard. So I'm always actually looking for those moments when things are difficult. When I know that I'm willing to put in a level of work that other people just aren't willing to put in, that I'm willing to spend hour after hour after hour researching people, having two people on the same day that each require a day or a day and a half of research, so spending my entire weekend working on it, working on it literally until the minute I go to bed, I was listening to podcasts and interviews as I'm brushing my teeth, really making my wife put the dogs away so that I could take every possible second, every transitional moment, everything to drink in a little bit more knowledge and then synthesize all of that stuff so that I could do an interview that nobody else is going to be able to do. And that for me is what everybody should be doing. If you want to do something great, if you want to stand out, and I want this show to stand out, if you want to be able to pull that off, you've got to work harder than anybody else. There's no substitute for that. And that is the thing that I love. That is what I love about hard work. Most people just aren't willing to do it. So if you want to separate yourself from everybody else, get better than everybody else. And when you're willing to put in that work, when you actually hunger for moments like this, where you get to show yourself, because everybody else, I don't care what they think, I want to know for myself who I am and how hard I'm willing to work. So when you get these moments, take advantage of them. When they come, when you have a hard road in front of you, hit it with enthusiasm, hit it with excitement, hit it knowing that on the other side of that, you get to feel a certain way about yourself that other people will never get to feel in their lives because it's the way that only people who push when no one's watching get to feel about themselves. That's when you really be extraordinary. That's when you really do something. That's when you will surpass everyone around you. 
because you just did the work. You look forward to the test. You wanted to be pushed. You wanted to see what you're made of. That's what it's about. Rule number seven, shift to alpha wave state. I like the juxtaposition of the high intensity fight or flight sympathetic response of being in the gym and then the parasympathetic response of meditating mm -hmm. and being able to rapidly shift your state mm -hmm. like on a physiological level is really important. Mm -hmm. So I go from that, I come out of the gym, I'm huffing and puffing, I sit down and I see how rapidly I can calm my heart rate, how rapidly I can calm my breath mm -hmm. and I listen to the sounds of nature. Mm -hmm. So if it's you know raining outside, I'll listen to rain. If it's night, I'll listen to the sounds of you know like a meadow at night. Um, which I actually find really relaxing. And I get lost in that. Now the reason that I do that is that shifts you into what's called an alpha wave state. Love this. When you get into an alpha wave state, it's commonly referred to as being calm and creative. So it's not sleepy, okay? That's like getting more into theta. Mm -hmm. So you feel completely alert, but you feel calm, you feel creative. And so parts of your brain are talking that don't normally talk. So you get these like really far flung sort of creative answers to a problem. Since the whole point of this is to get into an alpha wave state, as soon as I feel completely calm and creative, sometimes it takes five minutes, sometimes it takes 30 minutes. But once I feel calm and creative, I go into thinkitating, where I let my mind begin to wander onto the biggest problems that I face in my business. And in that, I'll just have these ideas and I take notes and I go back to it, so I'm still breathing, I'm still keeping my eyes closed except when I'm taking notes. Mm -hmm. And I stay in that space and I can sometimes elongate that for another 30 minutes. So my typical meditation is 15 to 20 and then I'll thinkitate for 10 to 40 minutes, depending mm -hmm. on like if I'm really on a vein of something interesting. Mm -hmm. And knowing that I'm gonna be able to do that once I get into the alpha state, I'm very, I actually get into the alpha state much faster because I'm not thinking, oh, is this an idea I should take a note on? I'm just like, when am I really there? Yes. When I feel it click in, I'm like, okay, cool. And if I have an idea, boom, then I go for it. Mm -hmm. Rule number eight, never back down. As Emiliano Zapata said, I would rather die on my feet than live on my knees. It's one of those things I think echoes through everybody's heart, but it is easy to say and it is very hard to do. And that brings me to the most central quote to my life. Never give in. Never, never, never. In nothing great or small, large or petty, never give in except the convictions of honor and good sense. Never yield to force. Never yield to the apparently overwhelming might of the enemy. Winston Churchill. That to me is the mantra that you have to say over and over and over if you want to live on your feet. You have to understand there are going to be times where the might of the enemy is so clearly superior to the force that you have mustered in your own soul that what they bring to bear, they are so much farther ahead. They have force that makes you want to crumble in despair at their feet. And at that moment, you have to know who you are. At that moment, you have to know that under no circumstances would you ever yield to that, that you will rise up, that you will stand before anybody not afraid to be struck down. That you could handle. Rule number nine, read books. I believe the greatest gift that any great thinker can offer the world is to take the time to write down all of their insights. They say a fool never learns, a smart man learns from his mistakes, and a wise man learns from the mistakes of others. Now, I don't know about you guys, but for me, I have spent a lot of time being a fool. I've spent a reasonable amount of time being smart, but oh man, it is precious few times when I've truly been able to be wise and learn from someone else. But virtually every time I was able to get some wisdom, it was at the hands of an author. When people ask me who my mentors were, I always tell them it's the authors that I've read. Books contain the secrets to the universe. And rule number 10, the last one before a very special bonus clip, is push past your breaking point. Right now, all I want to do is go to bed, and this is where identity kicks in. This is why I have this painting here of Michael Jordan from the infamous flu game. I got sick, I don't know what it is. Uh, I spent the last couple days with stomach cramps, uh, fatigue, fever. I've got a big talk tonight at USC, and I would love nothing more than right now to crawl into bed, but I'm not gonna do that. And I'm not gonna do that because my identity doesn't allow it. Even right now, as I think about the amount of energy 
that I'm expending in preparing for tonight and getting through the day and making sure that everybody here on the team is moving forward is because of that person that I'm trying to become. These are the things that I absolutely have to do in order to keep pushing forward, to be me. It comes down to identity. It comes down to what vision you have crafted for yourself, what demands you make of yourself, and how you react when you're tested. At the end of the day, you should want to be tested. At the end of the day, I'm actually grateful that twice now I've been confronted with either doing uh, an interview or having a talk where I'm sick. And the reason that I'm grateful for that is I get to see how I respond. So what I will say to you guys is, who are you trying to become? Not who are you today, but where are you trying to get to? And what is the price that you're willing to pay to get there? And what are the things that you're doing, repeating in your own mind, surrounding yourself with, that are actually gonna help make you that person? Because at the end of the day, your identity is all that you have. At the end of the day, your identity is going to drive your behavior. And at the end of the day, there is nothing else. Now I've got a really special bonus clip that I think you're gonna enjoy. But before that, it's time for the question of the day. I wanna know what was your single biggest takeaway from this video and what are you going to do to take action on it this week? When you write down what day, what time, and what place you're going to take action on something, you have a 91% chance of following through versus just 35% if you got motivated but never wrote down a plan. And when you share your plan and have public accountability, it raises your chances of following through even higher. So that's what I want to do today for you guys. You watch this video. What was your single biggest takeaway and what is your plan to take action on it this week? Let me know, put it down in the comments below. Open yourself to being changed. Whenever I read a book, I actually say to myself, be open to being changed by this information. It's incredible to me how many people encounter a book, an idea, a speaker, a movie, whatever, and it's amazing, and they go out and they're jazzed and they tell people about it, but they're not actually changed by it. They don't actually go out and act in accordance with that new piece of information. And at the end of the day, the takeaway the takeaway from my talk is, this is all gonna boil down to execution. It's all gonna boil down to your ability to, to do it, and to do it really well. So open yourself up to letting ideas actively change you. And you're gonna have to do things, create habits, in order to make sure that they stick. If you want to change your life for free in 30 days, check the link here below me. Or if you want 10 more awesome rules from Tom Bill, you check the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy them. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there.